The greatest single challenge we have are negative emotions and negative habit patterns. Positive habit patterns are joy, love, spontaneous humor, happiness, compassion, and so on. But negative emotions are the greatest enemy of all. We can only improve our lives to the degree to which we free ourselves from our negative emotions. And the good news is that no child is born with any negative emotions. All negative emotions are learned from infancy onward. And that's a good thing because if it was not true, then we could not get rid of them. Because if it was part like our eye color or our hair color or our height, we couldn't get rid of it. But it's not genetic, it's not fixed, it's learned, and it's therefore, it is therefore relearnable or unlearnable. You can, in other words, just reach in and short circuit the negative emotion circuits which we've learned. What we find is that it is impossible to have a negative emotion or a negative feeling of any kind unless you can justify it, unless you can explain why you are entitled to this negative emotion. Why what someone else has done or not done entitles you to this negative emotion. So if we stop justifying, in the Bible, which is a, a book on psychological and spiritual development, in the Bible, in the Sermon on the Mount, it says, judge not that you be not judged. You see, because if you judge, you become a hanging judge, you automatically condemn. If you judge and condemn, you justify and create negative emotions. The worst thing of all is it doesn't affect the other person, it affects you. So if we stop justifying, the negative emotion starts to die. The second part is identification. Identification is where you take things personally. And this is very common. We hear of something that happened, we take it personally, we become angry and upset of something that's happened to someone somewhere else. So if you don't justify and tell yourself you're entitled to this emotion, if you don't identify and take it personally, the emotion starts to die. The fruit starts to die. However, what's more important is the trunk of the tree. The trunk of the negative emotion tree is blame. And all negative emotions require for their survival blame. If you stop blaming, you stop the negative emotion. And it's almost like your negative emotion tree is like a Christmas tree that's plugged into the wall. If you jerk it out of the wall and you cut down the trunk, if you stop blaming, all your negative emotions stop. I told you I spent 4,000 hours, spent years studying this subject. I was overwhelmed by its enormity because the key to your fulfilling your full potential as a human being is to eliminate your negative emotions. Because if you eliminate negative emotions, what's left? Only positive emotions, happiness, joy, the one, the one common goal that all human beings have is to be happy. To be happy and joyous and loving and, and feel wonderful about themselves and their relationships. And the only thing that impairs that is negative emotions. And these negative emotions we'll talk about in a second are learned. So the key is to stop blaming. And the way that you stop blaming is with a very simple three-word neutralizer or zapper, and it is the words, I am responsible. I am responsible. So from now on, whenever you think of anything that makes you mad, just say, wait a minute, I'm responsible. I'm responsible. I'm responsible. You see, your mind can only hold one thought at a time, positive or negative. It cannot hold the thought of responsibility and the thought of anger at the same time. Now, people are going to give me every conceivable response to this position because nobody wants to give up their negative emotions. You've paid for those negative emotions. You spent years keeping them alive and fertilizing them and justifying them and talking them over with other people and putting water on them and thinking about them and so on. People love their negative emotions. To get them away, you almost need a crowbar to get people to give up their negative emotions. In fact, what we have found is that if you have just one negative emotion that you will not part with, that alone can sabotage your whole life. So the starting point of your achieving the greatness that is possible for you is to get rid of the negative emotions. So when we talk about I am responsible, your ability to respond in an effective way is the critical measure of how much you become as a human being. In other words, if you can respond effectively to crises, problems, upsets, which may, be, which may not be legally your fault, if you can respond positively and effectively, it means that you've come a long way. It means you've become one of the best developed human beings on our planet. Because average human means fall apart, get angry, blow up, go into chaos, throw a fits, have tears, threaten to sue and pour the drink down their throat and everything else when they have a reversal. But not top people. Top people say, hmm, stay calm here. What's happened? Let's look at it. What do we do now? What's our next, dis dis our next action and so on. So by saying I am responsible, whenever you feel something angry, you neutralize the negative emotion. If you keep repeating the words, I am responsible, over and over again, pretty soon they become an automatic mantra. Something happens, you start to become angry, you instantly say, wait a minute, I'm responsible.
one of the critical manifestations of negative emotions that deflates our self-confidence. And you notice this? All these fears hold back our self-confidence. Fears we can't, fears we have to, fears we have to please other people. Other people won't like us. We may lose our time or money. All they translate into the worst, one of the worst of negative emotions, which is guilt. Guilt goes around with her twin sister, unworthiness, is we feel unworthy. Now, it's interesting is that no child grows up with guilt. Most of the main religions in the world have, at a very early stage, inculcated guilt as a fundamental part of their teachings. And they use it at a very early age because the easiest way to control people is with guilt. So there's two reasons why guilt is practiced um, deliberately. One is for control and the other is for manipulation. And control and manipulation, why? It's because they work. If you can get your children to feel guilty at an early age, you can control them like on a fishing string for the rest of your life. And what you do, you do it way, first of all, we use destructive criticism. Destructive criticism breaks people down emotionally. And if you criticize them a lot when they're young, they'll feel broken down, their self-confidence is down, their self-esteem is down, and then you use guilt to manipulate them. And the way that you deal with guilt is when anybody ever tries to use guilt on you, you say, excuse me, are you trying to make me feel guilty? And they'll say, oh no, no, because nobody will admit it. They saw it the first few times. You say, that's great, because it doesn't work on me. Guilt doesn't work on me. Oh, oh good. And then they'll try it again mother and you say excuse me are you trying to make me feel guilty again no and finally she'll say yes I am you say well it's not going to work it worked in the past it doesn't work now is always say when a person says anything are you trying to make me feel guilty that immediately stops the game the game only works if it's underground as soon as you bring it up and put it on the table the game stops and you don't allow people to make you feel guilty because guilt is totally destructive. It destroys your soul. It undermines your self-confidence. So the way that we get rid of guilt, and we'll talk about this in a couple of seconds, the final principle I have to teach you with, have to teach you is the most important principle in self-confidence, the most important principle in personal development, and it's based around another law, and it's the law of forgiveness. Now the law of forgiveness says that you are a healthy person to the degree to which you can freely forgive and forget offenses against you. To the degree to which you cannot, you move down the human totem pole and you become a less and less person. A person who can forgive nothing is a person who's totally destroyed psychologically and emotionally. So how do you deal with forgiveness? Number one, forgive your parents. You do, you do not become an adult until you have forgiven your parents 100% for every mistake they ever made. Remember, it's never too late to have a happy childhood, so just go back and forgive your parents. If they're no longer with you, forgive them and let them go. So the second thing, Forgive any relationship that you ever had that didn't work out. Now this is hard because it's so personal and it's so painful. But if you can forgive your parents, it's a real good warm up. Most people are still mad at their parents in their 50s. If you then forgive every previous relationship, you accept that you were at least partially responsible for getting into the relationship. You were definitely responsible for staying in the relationship. You just say, I am responsible. I am responsible. I am responsible. I bless them and let them go and just let it go. Because in letting them go, you set yourself free. By not letting them go, you're keeping yourself in prison, in an emotional prison. The third thing that you can do is forgive everybody else. Forgive everyone else in your life that has ever hurt you in any way. Every past childhood slight, every sibling, every person in your family, every person you ever worked for, every lousy boss or person who cheated you, lied to you, robbed you and everything else and so on, I mean, just let it go. Just let it go. Remember, it's a selfish act. You're doing it for yourself. And finally, number four, this is really critical, forgive yourself. Now, I have it on good authority. I've done some research on you before you came here. And I find that every single person here has done some wicked, senseless, brainless, foolish, cruel, idiotic, stupid things in their life. Is that true? Yes. Say yes. 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 Let it go. And please understand this. The person who did those things no longer lives, no longer exists. The person you were in the past is a different person than you are today. The person you are today wouldn't do those things because you now have wisdom, you have hindsight, you have intelligence, you understand consequences. So the person you are today is a different person from the person you were back then. So don't keep beating yourself up because that, that other person, another person, did something that today you disapprove of. All right? Just let yourself go. Let yourself off the hook. And when you let it all go, it all, it's almost like a huge burden off your back. You just forgive everybody and you forgive everything. And on a go forward basis, you just forgive everybody. You don't care, have any negativities at all. No negativity toward anybody. You're just a positive person. And if you'll do that, if you accept responsibility, like yourself, and forgive everyone else, 
you become a truly superior person. Most amazing darn thing.